Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Visual Studio Toolbox. I'm your host, Leslie Richardson, and today we are continuing our ongoing mini-series all about a brand new Visual Studio dot extensibility model, which is packed with a bunch of new ways to make it easy to write your extensions in Visual Studio. So uh, if you are new to this uh, list, <laughs> good news, it is a playlist, so you can go back to the top of this entire series to learn everything that you need to learn because we're pretty knee deep in by now. We're, we're talking about commands again, however, but if you need that commands refresher, definitely check out that, I think, episode two, which was just all about commands, which is like the foundation of a lot of what we've been covering since then. So joining me today is Murphy from the extensibility team. Hi, Murphy. Hey, Leslie. So we're going to be talking about placing commands, which is essentially how you can make sure they show up where you want them or how you can put them in the UI uh, for them to be accessed. Um, maybe we could jump into the code and I'll give like a quick refresher on commands. Awesome. And just as a quick uh, refresher for people who might need an update on what are commands, just so we're all on the same page, can you give us a... Yeah, quick description. Commands are places where you configure stuff to happen. Um, so maybe more uh, a command is essentially something uh, you can configure it to be a button. Um, it can be a item in the toolbar. It can be a lot of things um, that does something. And there's a lot of metadata associated with that command. Um, you know, if you remember maybe back from. Uh, the second toolbox episode, there's this command configuration is where you specify some information about your command and you can do a lot of stuff here. Like your tooltip text, some flags, you know, keyboard shortcuts, icon, constraints for when it's visible or when it's enabled and a bunch of other stuff. Um, so we'll be talking about those today, but we'll be talking specifically about placement. And placement is important because that's how you specify how users will interact with and see your command. Sure. So uh, obviously that's really important. So and when you're creating your first extension and you just make a command, is there like a default placement where it tends to go? I'm assuming we don't want every command to show up in the same spot, hence placement. Yes. Well, so I guess one of the nice things about the remote commanding model is even if you don't explicitly place your command, it's still available and still accessible. Um, through all-in-one search. And I have, as part of this demo, a place to show that. Certain things will have different default placements. Um, so for example, if we go over here, so this extension, right? So just to zoom out really quick, this is the declaration of a new extension. And as part of this, we're contributing two different commands. I have sample command. We have some explicit placements here. And maybe we can talk in a little bit about these goods. Um, and then I have unplaced, which is just some command. Uh, so in either case, you can place it or not. And this extension is installed in this VS instance. And you'll notice that I can't really see this unplaced sample command anywhere, but that doesn't mean it's not available. And if I open all in one, it still shows up. Um, and if I run it, it still executes. So the other default, maybe that's important, is um, like we have a toolbar defined here. So this is another contribution. Um, by default, this toolbar is going to get up here in just the main VS toolbar. But if you want to be more precise with your parenting, we can talk about that too. And a lot of these default placements are available um, in public docs. Good to know. So nice to know that there's... <laughs> Still reasonable defaults for people who may not realize that uh, there is more fine-grained control over where you put things right away. Yeah, for sure. I, I think with the toolbar, like there's some very reasonable defaults here. And say you wanted to change where this toolbar was going to go. We can specify some placements similar to how we did with the command. This is not going to be quite right here. But we could go command best of t parent um, and get the GUID and ID 
and be really specific about what item in the UI we want it to parent to. There's also some known placements. So these are statically defined um, set of placements that we can access if we don't want to go through the process of getting these GUIDs um, and IDs to be really precise. Um, but maybe for the sake of kind of maybe if so you have a VSCT or a VSSDK command that you want to convert, it might be worth talking about how we can get some of those GUIDs and what that would look like. Yeah, totally. Cool. So for some who are familiar with sort of the old style of commands, you have these GUIDs, which represent essentially groups or collections of commands and ID itself, which is an identifier for that command um, within that group. So I have an example here of some VSCT. So let's say before a group, um, and I was parenting it to this group, this tools menu which has this good. And I'm now want to implement this uh, as an extensibility command. I need to figure out what this good actually is and what this ID is. And the way I can do that is if I look here, I'll see I'm referencing these .h files. Uh, so standard ID command .h and VSSH LID. These will actually ship with your VS instance. Um, so if we look here, and just from the public docs, you'll see in here the IDE defined commands menus and groups. These are located in the VS SDK installation path and then under Visual Studio Integration Common Inc. So what that looks like on my instance is a bunch of .h files where a lot of these can be pulled out. Um, and so for this, this example, I've pulled up those two that are referenced here. So standard ID, Command H, and if we look for this GUID SHL main menu, it's not in this one, it's in, which one is it in? Um, whoopsie, it's in one of these two. I think my find is not working correctly. There we go, cool. So this is the GUID here, and if you string this together, you can just have Copilot do it for you, which is what I did you can get the actual GUID, which you could use to explicitly place that. I can jump into maybe an example of that happening here. Um, yeah, possible. I like to see that in action. In this case, we have our command and we have um, unplaced sample command. And so going back here, right, we see that for this toolbar we've defined, we are setting the children of this toolbar to be the sample command. And so if I click, this toolbar, we see sample command executed, which is this command, sample command executed. Now, additionally, you know, we have these explicit placements where we have set the parent using the GUID and ID. And so using that same process of looking in your VSCT and then checking the .h files, like that, the header files that are shipped with um, DS, you can get the GUID and the ID and then you can place those and parent them. So we'll see this actually shows up in a few different places. We'll see the file in the project context menu. So let's just look at any file. Uh, if right click, there is sample command. If we do the project context menu, also the sample command. And lastly, solution context menu, there it is. So it shows up in those three places. And then because we are uh, parenting it into this toolbar configuration, it shows up here as well. I like that there is still like a built-in way to be able to access those different GUIDs because I don't, I don't expect everyone to memorize every single mm -hmm. <laughs> GUID ID required. And you got to the name of the GUID just by doing like a go to definition. What did you do there? Yeah. You, so to get to the, the yeah, so, so, uh, this one. I think you can just get these files. You'll go to that directory from the docs um, and then you'll find those files there. And then you'll know from your VSCT, this is sort of specific to like maybe the migration case, you'll know the name of the GUID. Mm -hmm. And if you search for this value in the actual header file, um, that's where you'll find the actual GUID number rather than just the name of it. Gotcha. So 
you know, not not everything goes the way we plan sometimes in regards to where we're intending to place something. So what happens when you're trying to run your extension and the command that you expect to be someplace is not there? What, what are some tips and tricks for trying to debug that? Yeah. Um, so for debugging, there is an extension on the marketplace called the Visual Studio Accessibility uh, Diagnostics Explorer. And this is a really, really helpful way to get a peek into what's your command. Um, so I have this installed. I already have it open. Forget is this a new extension? It's a little... This is a fairly new extension, yes. Under this, we can see on the left uh, menu, we have activation constraint information. We have different extension parts, resources, all this stuff. For the purposes of this demo, all we really care about is the commands. Um, and specifically their placement. So if we look under commands, command parenting sample, which is the extension that I'm demoing and that we care about, and I can look at the command sets. So here we have a set of our commands. Within that, we have the two commands, sample command and with summation about each of them. So this is where you start. If you're like, where where is my command? I'm not seeing it where I would expect to see it. You come here and confirm that it is disabled um, because if it's not visible and it's not enabled, you won't see it. Uh, sure. So let's say you go here, it's visible and enabled, that's all good. Next, you can go to some of these placements and try to find out where it is. And if you look here, you'll see we have a couple different placements. So if you remember from the sample command, we have these three explicit placements and if we look here we'll see the parents so the parent id is that GUID, right the d3 something or other which we see right here and so these three are those so that's all good that means those are in the right place uh, and up here we can see the toolbar placement so here we specify the parent name which is just this toolbar yeah. And we can see um, the default group, which gets generated to manage the commands within that toolbar. Uh, so this we didn't have to explicitly declare. This was created for us. But we expect to see when we parent um, some command to a toolbar configuration. That is very nifty. I I do like just the ability to see if it's even visible or enabled. Because, you know, sometimes... I, at least for me, I don't know about you, but sometimes for me, I don't always realize where I'm placing something and turns out it's actually in a different place from where I expected it to be. Like maybe I picked the wrong toolbar or something for a value to be placed and it's actually in this other to toolbar or something that's slightly different. So it's nice to, <laughs> to know you get that uh, additional clarity of it exists, it's enabled. So maybe there's just something wrong with the intended placement versus the actual placement and stuff like that yeah the transparency into the metadata and what's actually happening here is super duper helpful um i've definitely found it helpful in in testing this stuff i was the, i gotta ask was this extension built using the new extensibility model i don't know i hope so i'm going to assume yeah that's fine but i do not know for sure you could get really meta with this it's like then you have to debug the placement of the commands used for this extension. <laughs> well, actually, <laughs> there's a quick way to find out. Yeah, it, in fact, it was. Look at that. Oh, my gosh. And that looks like this. <laughs> Here, we can see the placement on uh, the, <laughs> the uh, entry point, the extension entry point, which is here. So that's yeah. great. It debugs itself. Anything else that we should know about placing commands? Yeah, I think there's, you know, there's a lot of benefits of you don't have to explicitly place the command for it to show up. If you just want it to be available and all in one search, you can do that. There are still maybe cases where you have to be familiar with GUIDs and command IDs, but we do have known placements and those make things easier to have statically defined and human readable language makes life a lot easier. And the obvious other benefits of being able to update command metadata and not requiring the UI thread these are async by default, so you won't crash VS. In terms of placements, I think that's sort of the main deal. Awesome. And I do enjoy not 
crashing BS. I, I think most people <laughs> enjoy that. So <laughs> good stuff. Well, um, if people want to learn more about placing commands, I think we're going to link the sample and definitely this extension, right? in the description below. Outside of that, any final thoughts, Murphy? Uh, go play around with it. Well, you heard it here, folks. Go try it out to your feedback and continue watching this great mini series that we're doing all about the new extensibility model. So stay tuned for more episodes. And Murphy, thank you so much for being here. Yeah, thanks, Isaac. See ya. And to everybody else, try it out. Happy coding. Mm -hmm.